So just to recap, I've been making some videos about cooking and food and whatnots, and actually if you look on YouTube, you search for Pro at Cooking, you'll get one of my videos instead of the actual Pro at Cooking guys that are at ProCooking.com, which is a guy named Da Wei, who was on PureOnage.com. And uh, I made Da Wei stew one time with uh, some chicken, and I made like a beef version. Actually, this week I made a beef version. Here's a clip from that. So here's the finished stew. I got plenty of giant carrots in there. I got these big red potatoes that I put in there. I usually get small red potatoes, but these are larger ones I just cut in half. I usually make my stew with some garlic salt and lemon pepper instead of using some kind of like uh, dehydrated stew sauces or packets or whatever you put in there. Got some chunks of beef. It's very nice. And uh, a whole onion that is going to be peeled apart. And I got some of these croissants. That uh, these are like day old. Actually, May 21st. Yeah, day old. Actually, I got them yesterday, so these were like fresh or something. But they were like in the for the sale aisle or whatever. Usually, I get the old bread because you want something old and hard to dip in your stew because then it gets all soft. These must be really fresh croissants. I also get ugh, this big watermelon. I might pop that in the fridge when I get room. It's gonna be nice. Sometimes you get them that say seedless watermelons, but then they're not actually seedless. They just have really small seeds. Which I guess technically it's true because there's less seeds. Seed less instead of seed more, but not completely seed free. And I have a croissant. <laughs> Oh man, oh they're buttery. Oh man, that is good with the butter and the stew. What all have I done? What have I done? So yeah, I've made stew. I made breakfast. I flipped some eggs. I uh, I did some stuff on cam, live cam. I think I made pancakes or some cinnamon rolls or something one night. Uh, baked a cake, and um, I made other videos where I'm like testing out British food, Japanese food. One where I was sitting around eating pizza sticks. And there's one more I was sitting around eating Burger King and like everybody says that they get hungry from my videos and have to go get whatever I make. So it's really good advertising. I should really make some money at this. Actually, I used to work at a convenience store where I would cook stuff and uh, there's been this big debate between American biscuits and gravy and stuff and English biscuits and this guy's like all pissed off at me. So that's what I'm going to make today. I'm going to make American biscuits and gravy. So when I used to work in this convenience store, I used to make it for customers. So actually I was professional at cooking. It's kind of odd when you think about it. I actually got paid to make gravy. Yeah, so I'd originally planned to make this about uh, rotisserie chicken, but uh, most of that video footage was lost in a tragic grease fire accident, and this is all I could salvage. And that's how you make my grandmother's famous rotisserie lemon pepper chicken recipe. Isn't delish? Mmm. Mmm. Yummy. Yeah, so I can't really tell you how to make that. It was a pretty complicated, long procedure. It took six hours. Uh, but anyway, here's the gravy mix I'm going to be using. It's a uh, mix two cups, so I got two packets. Uh, that's what it looks like, gravy and biscuits, American style. i just point this out so you don't get confused and think I'm putting meat sauce on top of cookies or tea biscuits or something. That's, what, that's the only reason I'm pointing out what biscuits and gravy is in America. I'm not making fun of England. You know, when I used to make it in a convenience store, you just boil some water and you pour it in the mix and try and get the amounts right. Uh, it says bring one and a half cups of water to a full rolling boil. Blend the gravy mix with a half a cup of cool water. Mix or whisk until lump free. I don't have a whisk, so I'll probably use a fork or something. Put it in the cold water and put the cold water in the hot water. Just put it all in the water. Mix it up. Cook it. That's probably what I'll do. Screw that. Alright, so I've got my water boiling, and I'm going to get these biscuits in the pan. Last time I didn't let you see the opening of the biscuits, which is always fun times. You take this, like that, ah, it's scary. It pops open. See, this is why I think people have those balloon fetishes where they're afraid of balloons, because you don't know when it's going to pop. Biscuits are kind of scary that way. That's so you always got a couple that get stuck in the end like that, the end cap biscuits. You gotta dig them out. That always makes them look deformed and retarded. So I've got my cake pan that I didn't use when I baked my cake the other day. The one that I forgot about. Just organizing the biscuits and then like around in a circle. I'm actually gonna make another cake this week. I've got another cake mix thing. So I'll have to wash this immediately after breakfast today. Just 
not really enough room. If I got them in there like that, I guess that's going to work. They're all going to fluff up. And you can tear them apart. Put your butter and shit on them later. While the biscuits are cooking, because they take a pretty long while, they're like the longest thing we got to cook. I got some uh, eggs at the store, and these are the large brown eggs, which I guess most people have. These are what chicken eggs look like before they bleach them and put all the crazy additives and shit in them, I think. I mean, some chicken eggs are white by default, but they usually have brown streaks or kind of weird colors, and they do something to the eggs to make them all uniformly colored. Now I prefer the brown eggs because they're more natural and I didn't really bring anything to put my eggshells into. There we go. Anyway, these are hard eggs. I've actually made a video where I cooked eggs, didn't I? What the fuck? It looked like there was something in that egg. I don't know what it was, but don't worry about it. It's not shell. My grandma used to call these a racist name, which I will not repeat. You could kind of go from Negro eggs and go from there, but um, my grandma is kind of a racist. Not like a, a really hardcore racist, just like racist enough where she wouldn't want me marrying a black woman. But that's pretty racist. Luckily, my grandma doesn't have the internet, so she'll never see this. <laughs> Unless somebody shows her Christmas, oh god. Got a little milk in here already, got a little salt. Oh shit, there's way too much salt. A little pepper. Salt and pepper, a little milk, just a splash of milk. You can also put some cheese, shredded cheese in here. Mushrooms, onions, if you want to make like an omelet. I'm just gonna scramble these eggs up like I did in the other video, make some scrambled eggs. And I have to hit my mouse without getting egg goo on it. Ah, knuckle bashing. Ah, god damn it. All right, the gravy. It's a little update. It's coming along. It's kind of uh, looks like oatmeal from this camera angle. Let me see if we can. Yeah, that's some nice gravy. The key to cooking is to get everything to come together at about the same time. So you want to start with things that take the longest first, and then the medium things second, and then the things that take a really short amount of time, like eggs. You want to do those last. So my biscuits are starting to fluff up, and the gravy starting to thicken. My eggs are just about already done, so. Okay, while it's finishing up, I just wanted to point out that my gravy is a little lumpy. Probably why they wanted you to put the mix in the cold water first and then put it in the hot water to keep it from being lumpy. It probably makes it all smoother. But I don't really care if it's lumpy. The texture of the gravy doesn't matter to me. And a lot of like professional cooks will say the textures are really important, but they're not in some things. I mean, some things like a uh, hamburger. You might want lettuce on your hamburger. Not because lettuce tastes super fantastic. Just love the taste of lettuce. It's just the texture of the lettuce makes it crunchier. And so like a burger, you want it to be crunchy. Or bacon on a hamburger. You don't really notice the bacon with all that beef and tomatoes and lettuce and all the other crap, but bacon's good on a hamburger because it makes it a little crunchier. So the textures are kind of important, but not in gravy. In middle school, when I'm eating stuff, I would like combine it. I would mix stuff together and eat it, and people would get all freaked out. Like, you're putting peas in your mashed potatoes and eating it at the same time. That's weird. What the fuck are you doing? You're crazy. It's all going to the same place. It's like, I used to go to Dairy Queen, which is a good place to get biscuit and gravy and other breakfast items. It's a franchise store, but you can order extra stuff, and since we're just, like, we lived in a country little town, so everybody was like, they all ate pretty much the same crap, so. If you said you wanted some extra eggs or something with your biscuit and gravy, they just plop it on top of your biscuit and gravy. I mean, they didn't put it on the side or anything. If you wanted some bacon, they just pot it right in the middle of your gravy. Just say, some biscuits and gravy and just pop some bacon on top. Okay, we're done. I've got all my stuff together here. This is really weird having it all on my computer desk, but anyway. Plate of biscuits. Freshly baked. Probably took them out a little early because they're not quite as brown as they could be. Bought a gravy. Scrambled eggs. Now here's what we do. So you want to take some of your... That's oh, a hot plate! Take some biscuits. Split them in half like so. My friends, Peaches and Star Magic and other people from Kentucky will know what I'm talking about here. This is how it's done. You spread out your biscuits for all you English folk. And you take your gravy and pour it on top. Just like that. Maybe put a sprinkle in the gravy on the eggs. Just a little bit like that. Oh, nice. See, it's got pepper in it, but you usually want to add some more pepper. Unfortunately, I don't have any tomatoes to slice up and put in this. Oh, this is nice. Eggs and gravy. Holy crap. 
Did I get sausage flavored gravy? I think I did. It tastes really meaty. There's no meat in it, but it tastes like sausage. It's pretty nice though. My first time making gravy at home. No, you think I'm a professional because I did it so well and everything is so perfectly done. Yeah, this gravy kind of has a weird taste to it, but it's what it looks like. Biscuits and gravy. This is what we're talking about in America. We say biscuits. Yeah, so anyway, people have commented that in my videos um, where I'm cooking stuff and eating fat things and doing stuff like that. People always go out and buy whatever they I'm making. Like when I made that Pizza Hut video, everybody went to Pizza Hut. And I'm sure with this video, there's so much crap in it. Everybody's going to go out and buy like a watermelon and a rotisserie chicken and some biscuits and gravy. It's just going to be crazy. Everybody's going to get fat as hell today. So I'm naming this Fat Tuesday. First Tuesday after Memorial Day from now on will henceforth be known as Fat Tuesday.